Hello folks, we are going to talk about IP version 6 addresses. Understanding IP version 6 is a very important topic because of the fact that IP version 4 has a very limited lifespan. Now IP version 4 in and of itself has about 4.3 billion addresses within that address space. Now that might seem like a lot of addresses, but really when you look at all the address spaces, that's not usable. There's about 3.7 billion addresses that are usable. So there is a significant number of addresses that are not able to be assigned to end devices. With the rapid growth of IoT, Internet IP version 4 has been grown out of. So IP version 6 has actually been development for quite some time now, many, many years. We have always known that we were going to run out of IP version 4 addresses. But the big difficulty in getting folks to use IP version 6 and to adopt it has been the fact that there is so much developed around IP version 4. There are so many devices that have IP version 4 built into their protocol stack that it was easier to find work around to extend to the life of IP version 4. Things like network address translation, DHCP and so on that we really couldn't have to move to IP version 6 in a very quick manner. We have had many many years to perform a migration to IP version 6. But there are difference between IP version 4 and IP version 6. There are network layer protocols, they are designed for logical addressing and path determination. So they do the same thing, but IP version 6, it was developed with the thought in mind that we were limited in our IP address space. We were able to look at IP version 6 and since we were redesigning the protocol, make some modification that made it even more efficient than IP version 4 is. So in other words, we learn from our mistakes. Now let's just compare our headers. So on the left hand side, you see an IP version 4 header and we have already discussed their fields. Let's just look at the difference between IP version 4 and IP version 6. So, and you know what we have a version field in IP version 6 as well. Here, IP version 4 has an IP address header length and we don't need that field anymore in IP version 6 and so that field was not kept. It was just simply removed which reduces the size or the overhead involved in this header. The next field that we have in an IP version 4 is that type of service field TOS. Now we don't have a type of service field but rather we have renamed it and sort of changed the position in IP version 6. And that is now called the traffic class field. And that traffic class is very similar to the type of service field in an IP version 4 header. We can mark things with DSCP value, differentiated service code points or IP precedence and things of that nature so we can use it for quality of service. Now next in IP version 4 we have the total length. In IP version 6 we have the payload length. We don't have the total length. We have the payload length and length of the payload here. So the name and the position was changed. We have a time to live Value in IP version 4, we call that a hop limit in IP version 6. Hope, not hop, but hope limit in IP version 6. But again, that is assigned to prevent routing loops. Next, we have a protocol field in IP version 4 and so rather than call that the protocol field we have was called the next header field in IP version 6. 
Now the next header can point to a layer 4 header and so it could be TCP or UDP that it point to or it could point to another header that is used at layer 3 like a routing header so the functionality was changed just a bit there. You do notice that there were a number of fields that were left out. The identification, the flag, the fragment offset. These are not anymore in IP version 6. The header checks them. We were these left out. Well, let's talk about identification flag and fragment offset. Well, those fields were used for fragmenting the packet. In IP version 6, the responsibility for fragmentation line lies with the host. The host can do a path MTU discovery prior to sending packet and figure out what size should send those packets rather than waiting for the network to fragment those packets. So that's why we don't have that fragmentation offset flags and, and identification field present in the IP version 6 header. We don't have a header checksum because we are going to rely on the upper layer protocol TCP and UDP to perform the checksum. Now we have our source and our destination address. Now the difference here you will notice it is much larger field in IP version 6. That is because it is an 128-bit address versus a 32-bit address in IP version 4. So we are going to have 256 bit of addressing the source address and the destination address. But that's okay. That's exactly what it needs to be. We don't have any option or padding. We don't need to pad these fields here. The headers is what header is. Now we do have one more field that is a brand new field in IP version 6. This is called the flow label. We can use this. Some folks will say that well use that to identify flow of traffic which could be used in a quality of service implementation or something to that degree. So that is comparison between the IP version 4 and IP version 6 address. The big takeaway here is that IP version 6 header has been simplified. Now we have many attacks that target the field of an IP version 4 header. So if those attack fields exist in IP version 6, then they can still be an attack vector. If somebody were to change the next header field, they could point to another header that give different information than what we originally intend intended. But working as a security analyst, you will need to be able to identify addresses so that you can track down things they are going on in the network. You will need to understand the IP version 6 address format. Now we represent it as a hexadecimal value. Each hexadecimal field is 16 bit. These are case insensitive being that we are using hex values so it is case sensitive we don't really care whether it's uppercase or lowercase that makes no difference and so we are going to have a combination of letter and number when we look at one of these 16-bit field if there are leading zero in the field those are optional and the reason that they are optional is because we are delineating each field with a Colon. If we leave off the loading zero in a field, then the protocol is smart enough to simplify fill in those leading zeros so that we end up with a 16-bit hexadecimal field. Now let's say that we have multiple 16-bit fields that are a zero value. Well, we can take a shortcut there and represent those with this double colon, but we can only use that once in an address. And the reason is that the protocol will insert zero where the double colon is until the entire address is 128 bits. So if we use it twice in an address, then the protocol would not understand whether it should put 32 B to zero in this field and eight in another field. It wouldn't understand how many zero 
to use in a field. So if we use it only one, then it works, it knows. I just fill in zero here until the address is 128 bits. But let's take a look on IP version 6 address example. As you will learn with IP version 6, there are multiple address types. One of the most common address type that we work with is unicost. Unicost is used for one-to-one -one communication. So in this example, we have IP version 6 unicost address, and that address is 2001 colon 0000 colon 130F colon 0000 colon 0000 colon 09C0 colon 876A colon 130B. Now when you listen to that address, you are thinking that is pretty hard to remember that. It is not like you can ask somebody to try to ping your address at 192.168.1.1 and IP version 6 address is a mouthful so we can abbreviate some of this and simplify that address just a little bit here so let's see how we do that first of all we can leave off the leading zero in a field and in the next example here we have done that 2001 colon 0 so we know that we need to fill that in until it is a 16-bit field with zeros. Then 130F. Now we are going to use that shortcut that is double colon. We are going to fill that in with zero. And you can see from the original rest that makes sense to do. Then we are going to do 9C0 colon and in that 9c0 field, zero field we have left leading zero out and that's okay because we have used that double columns so it is going to know to fill in enough zero for that to expand properly the next field is 876a colon 130b so now saying saying that address is little bit easier 2001 colon 0, colon 130F, double colon 90C0, colon 876A, colon 130B. Still a little longer than IP version 4 address, but we can use things like DNS to simplify the resolution. We also have a multicast address. Multicast is for one to many communication, and that is represented with the FF01 address that you see here ff01 colon 0 colon 0 0 colon 0 colon 0 i forgot how many zero and lastly one now we could abbreviate that and we could say ff01 double colon one and ip version 6 would be smart enough to expand that now in ip version 4 we have a loopback address that is 127.0.0.1 we use that to test our ip stack and make sure that we can ping ourselves and it allows for communication within our own system we also have the concept of the address in ip version 6 and the loopback address is 0 colon 0 colon 0 0 0 and lastly 1 and we can abbreviate it double colon 1 and that is our loopback address. Finally, an unspecified address would be all zero, and we will abbreviate it that with the use of two double colon. One implementation of that would be in default route. In a default route, to get an anywhere or to get to any unspecified address, we want to send our traffic to a default gateway. In this case, we could say IP version six address double colon, and then give in the default gateway's address. This is just an example of our IP version 6 address format, but again understand it is extremely beneficial for a security analyst as you will be looking at packet capture on a network that will likely carry both IP version 4 and IP version 6 address. This was all about from 
uh, from IP version 6. Next, we are going to talk about a uh, very important protocol that is called in transmission control protocol, TCP. So see you in next slide.